Hey guys, welcome to a Love Your Body Gourmet June's edition. <laughs> we are making baked falafels. Okay, so I've made this many, 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 many times, and it is a sure winner. And, and the reason why it's a sure winner, it's actually easier than you think. And a lot of times when you go to these falafel places in and around wherever you live, a lot of times these falafel mixes are pre-made to come in a powdered form. So you don't really know what's in there. So I always believe in, you know, simple, easy, delicious recipes, and this is one of them. So you ready to get started? First thing we're gonna do is preheat pre your oven at 375, okay? Preheat your oven 375, and then we're gonna get the food processor going. So basically everything on this top portion of the list, falafel ingredients, just drop it all inside the uh, food processor. That's what it is. So I've got it here. You, you kind of can't see it. Hang on, I'm gonna bring it over. I don't want to take the thing off because then the, the blade uh, doesn't, um, the blade gets moved around. So I basically put everything in there, the pistachios, the chickpeas, the mint, the parsley. What else is in here? Garlic, clove, onion. I didn't put olive oil. Let me put a little bit of olive oil in here. A little drizzle. Uh, I did put some cumin in here as well. And I'm gonna put some buckwheat. It calls for a it calls for a non-gluten, non-gluten flour. So you can pretty much use whatever you have. I've used all kinds of stuff, and it's pretty, it's pretty um, you can pretty much use anything. It does call for baking soda as well, but I don't have any. <laughs> You know, I've already made one batch and it totally turns out. So baking soda, definitely want to follow the instructions as much as possible, especially if you haven't made this before. <laughs> I thought I had baking soda, but I don't. So let's get this thing pumping. Now plug this baby back in and put the lid on. There we go, and it's done. It doesn't take very long. And don't forget to put some salt in here because I've actually made it with salt, without salt before, thinking I'm gonna try and cut back on salt. No, <laughs> you need to put some salt in there. <laughs> okay, so it kind of looks like this. And all you gotta do is make balls out of them. <laughs> so squish it in your hands and you can make it whatever size you want. And make sure you squeeze it nice and tight so this way it, it, it uh, holds the shape. So I kind of made it like this. Looks like um, a size of a meatball, pretty much. Lebanese meatballs, <laughs> except for it's not meat. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make this first because you're gonna put this in the oven and it does take a little bit, it takes about 25 minutes or so. And I do recommend that you turn them because as it gets brown, you want of like all size to be brown. Oh, we have somebody here. Hang on. Let me wash my hands. Hang on. Hey, Charmin. How are you? You can unmute yourself. I should put some here lights on in here. What's that? Put some lights on in here. Yeah, I want to see your lovely face. Ah. <laughs> so it looks like you're the only one so far. A couple of people bailed on me at the last minute. They sent me a couple of emails. So we kind of got yeah. started. So basically what I've done so far is in the recipe sheet, everything in the falafel ingredients, you want to just dump it inside the food processor. And um, what I've done is Pretty much everything, except for I realized I didn't have baking soda, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, and then any non-gluten or gluten, any kind of gluten-free flour. I used, what did I use? Hang on. I've got all kinds, but this time, it's just to help it bind, that's it. This time I used, uh, oh, <laughs> I think I used arrowroot, arrowroot flour, I think, but you could pretty much use anything. 
And if you don't have gluten-free flour, you can just use regular white flour is fine as well. So that's the other great thing about this recipe is that you can literally, you can't, you kind of get, you kind of can't go wrong. You kind of can't go wrong. So just make sure you try to make these balls as evenly as possible. So they cook evenly. So one doesn't burn while the other one's still cooking, right? Yep. So this recipe does make about 24, give or take, depending on how big or small the, um, the balls are. And I was just saying, uh, Charmin, that we should, uh, you want to squeeze them nice and tight so they don't come apart as you're baking. Uh -huh. So it's literally like making meatballs. You want to squeeze it nice and tight. Right? Yeah. And um, I do like this recipe because you can use them as snacks or you can make you know, or you can make it as a meal. Mm. And that's what's great about this recipe. And the falafels I was saying earlier that you buy at the falafel shop, oftentimes they buy in bulk, meaning the mix. So you kind of don't really know what you're getting. So I always like to make things homemade because you can control the amount of salt that you add in there. I don't know about you, but I'm having a hard time eating out lately because Everything is so over seasoned. They've got so much salt in there that the next day I wake up and I'm completely swollen and I've eaten a, a vegetarian meal or a, or a vegan meal. <laughs> and I'm not me vegan or vegetarian, by the way, but just goes to show you that they put so much seasoning in all the food, all the takeout food that we've been, you know, like that's, um, that's out there right now. It's so salty. I remember Peter came home, he was at the chiropractor and he stopped at like this chicken place and it was super healthy. It had brown rice, it had chicken, had lots of veggies, had, had you know, if you looked at it, you'd be like, yeah, that's a really good meal. And what happened was he came home and we shared it, it was so salty that uh, we, we couldn't, we could barely eat it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what's happening is everything is being so over seasoned out in the world of eating out. <laughs> and do you find that Charmin, that when you eat out, it's so salty? I do. And I, I also, I always find it's too much food. So I always cut it in half and bring half home. But sometimes, you know what I find when you buy something that is a protein substitute, yeah. I'd say you, um, you don't, you, you, you don't want, I like bacon, but I know it's not good for you, but sometimes, you know, you have a taste for it. So there are lots of substitutes, but we bought something the other day that was supposed to be a vegetarian substitute and couldn't even eat it yeah. because it was so salty. So salty. Yeah. The, the, you're right. The, the meat substitutes yeah. are very, very salty. Even yeah. I still haven't had it yet, but you know, it was really big last year was that beyond meat i shouldn't call any names but you can I, I looked at it i didn't even i i've never have never had it yet but um i did have um but i looked i did look at the packaging because you can buy that now at like even at like costco and at the grocery stores here and they're selling out like hotcakes here in yeah. toronto last i think it was last summer uh -huh. and um i looked at the ingredients the amount of salt that's in there it just wasn't even worth i'd rather eat meat yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I'd rather, cook my, own, I'd rather okay. cook my own steak and know exactly what I buy and right. uh, what kind of seasoning I put on. Right. So, and, and this falafel recipe is is really, really quite simple. And and if if you look at the recipe, there's like four, three different things that we're going to be making. I'm just going to turn on the water and get to wash my hands. Uh -huh. um, basically, just put all the ingredients together and just season it. That's pretty much it. So all of this stuff is super, super easy to make. And what I'm making today is, you know, I actually suggested that you guys make a falafel wrap either with a pita. So here's my yeah. falafels yeah. with a pita or using even cabbage, just so you get a little bit more vegetable into your, into your meal. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna show you what they look like because I made two batches. Look at my what my falafel balls look like. Okay, they look delicious. Yeah, yeah, it's really tasty, and um, so that's that. And then the second thing that we're gonna make while the falafel balls are in the oven is the tomato chili salsa. And I kind of already mixed it in already just to save some time because I kind of thought that 
people are busy this summer. <laughs> so I basically diced all the veggies. So the tomato, uh, I got some jalapeno in there. It calls for red chili, but it doesn't really matter. I've got right. a garlic in here as well. And I've got chopped oregano. But what I did put in here that didn't call for it was some red onion because, hey, you know what? Red onion is pretty tasty. <laughs> and I just put some olive oil in there and some mm -hmm. salt and pepper. And this can be part of your falafel. So as I was, as I was saying, the falafel that I'm going to make is going to be a deconstructed falafel bowl. So in other words, instead of eating it as a roll, I'm going to put on a plate and just throw all my ingredients on top. That's also another way of doing it. Mm -hmm. That's been a very pop popular thing is deconstructing uh, your dishes. Okay, so there is the salsa right here. So like I said, all the ingredients are listed. Just chop them up, throw them in a bowl, add some salt and pepper, some olive oil, and I added some extra onions in there because I just happen to have some. And you kind of can't go wrong with this, right? <laughs> and if you don't have oregano, you can use thyme or you can use basil, yeah. right? There's nothing some, well, it's, it's all it's, good. It's what's the last good. one, ba babel? Ba or you can use basil. I used oregano, oh, I happened basil. to uh, find yeah. some at the store. But if yeah. you don't have oregano, you can use basil. You yeah. can use um, thyme, like any of those herbs that you like. So that's what's great about these recipes that I've made them so many, so many times that sometimes I just don't have all the ingredients, but I still make it anyways, and it still turns out. So last but not least, we're going to make the cashew nut dressing ingredient. And if we have time, which I think we will, I'm going to show you how you got, how you can make some pita chips to make a deconstructed falafel ball with falafel bowl. Okay. So uh, the cashew nut dressing, I did make some tips. I did make some tahini, but I'm gonna make the cashew nut as well. Yeah. And I just have some cashew butter. I just bought it today. Uh -huh. And it calls for about six tablespoons. Let's use, no, that's not gonna fit. I'll use a smaller spoon. So let's put, um, and I'm, I'm notorious for, I mean, of course I'll always provide you guys with um, the right amount of ingredients in terms of how many teaspoons, how many tablespoons, and so on and so on. Right. But I, like I said, I've, I've made this dish so many times that I actually don't even measure it. <laughs> I kind of round it up or round it down, <laughs> depending on, depending on how, uh, how, uh, what ingredients I have in the house. But uh, the, the main ingredient in that falafel that makes it so yummy, I think it really is that blend. It's the mint leaves, the parsley, the mm -hmm. pistachios and I actually bought pistachios that were shelled already so in other words they're you don't, you don't have to be sitting right. looking at them because um that's no fun <laughs> mind you uh it was also very expensive but that's okay sometimes it's worth it yeah okay so I've got some uh cashew nut butter I'm gonna throw some olive oil in there and I usually just try to go by consistency versus measuring and tasting. So let me uh, hang on a second here. Give me a little bit of need this to pour it in. Some lemon juice. So you can make this cashew nut dressing or you can make tahini as well. But I got this recipe from this wonderful cookbook called Everyday Vegetarian. And it's a young couple. Well, maybe they're not so young anymore. <laughs> but, I think they're from Sweden or Norway or something like that. I bought this cookbook probably about, I don't know, a good 10 years ago. And she's got some really fun recipes in here. Okay. Uh, what, oh, what, is it called? what is it called? Amy? It's called uh, Everyday Vegetarian. Everyday Vegetarian. vegetarian. Okay. Yeah, that's the, um, I need some salt. Salt. I need some salt. I actually have it right here. I'll show you what it looks like. Uh huh. I think she's got. Um, I think she's got a couple of books out. I might even have her other one. Yeah, I bought it back in 2013 because I always write the date of when I purchased the book. So this is the book that I got it from, Everyday Vegetarian, and she's got some What's lovely, her, lovely name? things in here. What is her name? What is her name? Her name is, it's a couple, David 
Frank Hill and Louise Vin Vindahl. Louise Vindahl. Yeah, V-I-N-D-A-H-L. David, and I, I believe she's the cook and he's the photographer. I believe oh. that is the scenario. Okay. You know, Amy, uh, I keep realizing I, I'm going to have to change my my schedule to in, really to start to cater to the diet, to shop, to research, to designate some time to prepare foods. And that's so hard for me because right. my days are so full, and so long. But I, I realize I'm, I'm the only one here who can do it. I really, and I, and the thing is, I want to do it because I love good food and I'm, and I'm not finding it when we go out. And I don't think that, that we're making good food choices. So I want, I want to eat that way. And the only person who, unless I get it delivered and I don't see that happening. So right. I have to change my life and actually, you know, say, okay, Wednesday I'll be doing some cooking and preparing and, you know, all that. So. Yeah. And, and, and really is the beginning is always the hardest Sherman is. Yeah. You know, like if you can, if you can plan out your meals, I know, I know we did that in that five day cleanse that yeah. you guys were all planning your week out for that seven days. You should right. seriously consider doing that until you get used to eating a certain way. So this is too thick. This is too thick. So I'm going to add a little bit of water because mm. it's literally like peanut butter. <laughs> it's completely stuck to the side and it's not going to come out. So this is what I do is I just put it in a little jar and now this is better. Let's have a little taste. So I made, ca I made it with cashew. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh -huh. I'm gonna add some more salt. So that's what I would do if I were you and just scour the, um, the internet for like just simple, simple recipes, you know, or, you know, I have a collection of, of, um, of like vegan and vegetarian cookbooks. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the vegan vegetarian cookbooks, you can add meat to them, but you want the idea of getting more veggies in your diet versus getting a meat recipe book, get a vegan and vegetarian yeah. cookbook, and then you can add the meats in there as you like, right? So this way, it's just a little bit more versatile because that's typically what I do. I rarely buy a meat cookbook. I always buy vegan and vegetarian because... Plus, I find like you know, I'd rather have more vegetables at home, and then if we do go out or we go somewhere, then I'll ha I can have meat. I'm not yeah. a big meat eater. So yeah. I'm a, but I am a, I am a fish eater, so uh, you know I can do yeah. that. But I I just you know when I used to take these kids uh, on these tours, worldwide tours, that was called people to people. I always had to put myself down as a vegetarian because they never gave us near enough vegetables and uh you know so i said well i'm a vegetarian so now you have to give me salads and vegetables and everything else because you're not and they said you know what they said well you're american and you're throwing out most of the vegetables we give you so they you're were right. giving us french fries and hamburgers french that's fries. A really and good said, way yeah that's great and what that's what i do as well when i get on a plane and they ask you for yeah. a meal like you know i always pick vegan or vegetarian um yeah just because it's, I just always feel better because when you get a meat dish, it's just too much meat and then it's meat and carbs and there's not enough vegetables. So I always ask for a vegan or vegetarian meal. Well, I, also, you know, I also think whatever they call meat, I don't call meat. So, you know, you know, okay, what is this here? So this is pita chips. So instead of making your falafel inside of a pita, yeah, I just cut them all up into little bite-sized pieces. So I just slice them lengthwise and then chop them this way to make these little squares. Okay. Make these little squares. Okay. Yeah. And then I actually put it on a pan and I use avocado oil just so it has a higher burning point. Right. And I just fry them until they turn brown. And then, and then, um, and then I added the spice called Zatar and a Z A T A R Zatar. I don't have the packaging. I just put it inside, um, a jar, okay. a mason jar. And what this is, it's a Middle Eastern spice blend. It is, however, not gluten-free. It does have gluten in here. 
because I've looked at the ingredients, it does have gluten. So they're just, it's a spice blend. It doesn't have any salt, but it's just a spice blend and it's quite nice. And once I fried them up to the color that I want it, because I always go by how it looks, if it looks crispy and crunchy without burning, that's kind of the goal that you're aiming for. And then I sprinkle some zatar and then I, um, I add a little bit of salt and, and a little bit of olive oil on top, just so what, just so the, uh, the zatar sticks to the pita chips. And that's what I have done. Okay. So yeah. I've got my second batch of falafels in there. They're not ready to be turned, but I did make everything else. So I made the falafels as you, as you see here, as I showed you already. Yeah. Then I made that salsa, which is here that we quickly did together. Yep. And then I made that cashew nut dressing, which is here. Yep. And then what I did do prior to topping on the call today is I made some, uh, what the heck is this called? Uh, tahini, tahini dressing. Uh -huh. Tahini dressing. And I even just, you know what, tahini dressing is so easy to make. You can, you know, make rice bowls and put the dressing on, eat it with fish, you can eat it with chicken, eat it with vegetables all kinds of stuff because I like sesame seeds. So I prefer this. And then what I had done about four or five months ago is I made some pickled turnips because when I go get falafels at the store, I always ask for extra turnip and I just love them. So I decided to just make my own. And these are the pickled turnips and they've been sitting in my fridge for quite some time now and they're nice and the nice color. And then, mm -hmm. sorry, stuff in my face, <laughs> hang on. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make a little bowl. So you can see what my deconstructed falafel balls look like. So I'm gonna start with, I'll make this for my husband, he's a big eater. <laughs> I didn't make them very big. So I put like five, five balls, five, six balls in here. Yeah. Um, just to fill up the plate a little bit. And then I'm gonna throw some pita chips on top. Oh, and one last thing that I did make before, just because I love Middle Eastern food. This wasn't part of the recipe. Um, just because I didn't think we we're gonna have time to make it. And I have a tower garden downstairs in my basement and it's an indoor tower garden, which means it's a big tower. It's like this high, taller than me. I'm about 5'1". Uh -huh. and, um, and I'm growing some fresh produce on there. Oh. and I'm growing parsley. So I had a big bunch of it. And last time I made a big, huge bowl of tubuli. Mm -hmm. mm. And instead of using wheat germ, not wheat germ, wheat, bulgur wheat, bulgur wheat, I use quinoa instead to kind of give it the specs. It doesn't okay. taste like wheat. Cause I was like, I couldn't be bothered to have another thing in my cupboard because my pantry is full. <laughs> So I'm going to throw some tabbouli on top. Throw some tabbouli on top. This is my deconstructed falafel ball. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to add my tomato salsa. It's not, it's not salsa. Tomato, tomato, oh, it is salsa. Tomato salsa. Tomato salsa on the side. And then... Excuse me, I'm gonna add some turnips on here just because mm -hmm. turnips are so yummy and tasty. I don't think I've ever had one. <laughs> no, it just tastes, it just tastes like, like anything pickled, but I made them, did I make them fermented? I didn't make them fermented. They're just pickled, pickled um, turnips. And here is my da -da -da -da, falafel bowl. Isn't the, aren't they really good for you? Pickled foods are supposed to be good for you? No, it's fermented that's good for you, not pickled. Fermented is better for you. <laughs> that's a good question though. <laughs> it's the fermented. Let me check on the, um, on the falafel balls here. Okay. Yeah, they could still be in there a little bit longer. So see how they're still kind of green? And what I do is, let's just turn them over. Yeah, they could be turned over. Cause you kind of want them brown, right? Yep. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, you definitely want to squeeze them tight so it holds together. And I, I made a lot. <laughs> because you know what? I made them, my chickpeas are from dry versus from a can. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you don't have the time to, like if you're just starting out to eating more veggies and stuff, maybe can is a way to go because it's faster. Um, however, the dry, the dry legumes are always, the dry beans are always best. And it doesn't take long. If you try to cook them from dry, it'll take you about 50 minutes to cook them, which is a long time. <laughs> but what you do is, you know, a couple hours before you put the, um, the dry beans, the dry chickpeas in a pot, get yeah. some boiling hot water, pour it in, make sure it's very well covered and put yeah. the lid on it until you're ready to cook. And that takes out probably at least 50% of the time in cooking any kind of beans. Okay. And, um, yeah. Any what? questions, Charmin? No, it looks good. Looks good. I, it, it is good. Look at that. I'm going to take pictures. And if you happen to be seeing this video, uh, post, um, post live and you're making this dish, the rule is you have to post a photo of your creation inside the community because the fun of this of, of doing the cooking together is that you'll be surprised how everybody's dish looks so different and yet it still looks amazing 